Dustin. Hi. Usual as usual, and then we got the LIC GM, the winner of the Hunter Bowl 2018, three-time champion Warren Lee. Oh, nice! Great intro. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> um, you didn't you didn't mention his uh, record this year, though. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I believe it's one and uh, four, right? Yes, um, that's right. That's right. It's been an unfortunate start, but. You showed us last year, Warren. You went two and five, I believe, to start the season, and then you just took off. Yeah, no, I was really like kind of feeling shitty about probably going two and four. You know, after Thursday, uh, Thursday's uh, you know terrible showing. But then I realized like Warren got even to two and five two before and five. you know running the table. So yeah, proved us all wrong. Can't expect that, but like, yeah, season, season, definitely, definitely not over, even if you're at four or five losses. Yeah, how'd you do it, Warren? Uh, well, I had a team that scored a lot of points. <laughs> that's true. That's that's a big difference. <laughs> yeah. I'm it's gonna quite ignore simple. that part. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, if, I guess if it's that simple, then uh, maybe, maybe, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll you see for this. You're doing good this season. If we're going by that measure. <laughs> yeah. We'll see how it goes. I uh, I am just used to being good this part of the season and then tailing off as a, as it becomes more and more important. But in any case, we'll start off by looking at last week's results uh, through our who you got. Um, not another good week for Dustin again in this, but, you know, um, hopefully it improves. Uh, Dustin's line for New England great kills was New England minus 10. Um I took great kills, but New England won 231.18 to 115.5, and that was the uh, the poop game for Dustin. Um, unfortunate for him. Uh, Dustin only had Cooper Cup showing up with 21.45 points, and then for me, Christian McCaffrey went off 45.45 points. DJ Shark coming in 32.4, and then Michael Thomas 35.2. So a lot of points for one side, not too many for the other. Uh, what, <laughs> what did you think, uh, uh, Warren, on this matchup? Um... Yeah, I thought it would be closer, but um, it wasn't. Uh, you got, like, stealing performances from a bunch of guys. Uh, Dustin got floor performances from a bunch of his. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, your players are just better, so there's that. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Godwin also a 28. Yeah. I remember you and I, we, we talked about Chris Godwin before the season. Yep. And, uh, you know, I thought the floor – with Jameis was something that people weren't accounting for with how highly they're drafting him. But it turns out, you know, uh, maybe the floor wasn't properly being accounted for with Mike Evans either. Right. And yeah, you know, that's kind of what's happening. It's, I, I don't, I don't think Jameis is good enough to, to, you know, I actually, you know, Derek Carr once had two you know, <laughs> fa- fantasy wide receiver one. It's so true. I, I guess, I guess James could do it, but you know you, you do see the the variance week to week with both those receivers. Less so for Godwin so far. Yeah, it's it's hard to imagine. You're right. It's hard to imagine that uh, James will sustain both of them to you know like five, top five wide receiver finishes. But um, for now, Godwin has been doing amazingly. I think he's in the top five. If, I mean, I don't I don't know exactly where he, he might is. be number one. Oh my yeah, God, are you one. kidding me? That's he's crazy. That's crazy. Well. In any case, that's not going to hold up. Um, he's not going to finish at that at all. But um, yeah, I think Godwin just fits um, the the way that he runs from the slot. He takes a lot of the the routes in the middle. I think, and also his run after the catch ability. Right, I think that's where a lot of his um, skill sets are. And, and you know, he can kind of produce on his own. And it, that's at least what I thought coming in, um, Dustin. Yeah, coming into the season, I I, I like remember thinking like. A lot of people were kind of cooling down on Godwin after, like, you know, he got really hyped. They were like, yeah. you know, Mike Evans is still there. OJ Howard is still it's there. True. Like, it's going to be really hard for Godwin to live up to, like, the hype he was getting. But then I had the thought that, like, you know, like, Mike Evans is a really good player. But Chris Godwin, I could see, you know, taking over as the lead guy just because, you know, new offensive system. So there's there's a oh, reason yeah. to think right, that. Right. There's a reason to think that this is, like, you know, not just a fluke or you know not just like gonna like revert back to how it was last year like there really is a different offense so i, I personally think this is actually you know godwin's the new wide receiver one there and 
you know, Evans is still a, a great weapon, but, you know, he is a little, lot more up and down. So, you know, it, it, I think they're going to rely more on Godwin from week to week. Yeah, we'll see how this uh, situation goes. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to ask uh, Warren, actually. Go ahead. Um, no, you can finish your thought here first, and I'll <laughs> ask you something. Yeah, as you mentioned, he, he gets the slot stuff. Yeah. And, yep. and you know, that's, that's just a more reliable source. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and All right, that's, so Warren, like. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so looking at Wonky's roster, is there a weakness on this roster? Uh, I was just looking at it, and I would say no. Right? Like, uh, if you had to, like, what would you be most worried about if you're Wonky right now? If I'm Wonky, uh, I don't know. I would try to get, like, a, a more rock solid running back, too. Um, mm-hmm. But, like, a, when you have that many good receivers, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, Josh Jacobs is put up oh, 30 points right. on, on his bench. I didn't, yeah. I didn't even see that. <laughs> no, you yep. just benched him. I just benched <laughs> him. All I right. put in he Ronald Jones. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's I, I think this team I think this team is just stacked yeah. from top to bottom. They didn't even need DJ Shark to be stacked, but if DJ Shark is like, you know, the the breakout wide receiver of this year, like this is this is so stacked right now. I I Wonky keeps trying to deflect it, but th- I think this is the favorite like Yeah. Well in that case I guess the I guess quarterback you could always upgrade yeah. there, but yeah, it's kind of a weird quarterback season. Right, right. True. Yeah, That's the true. weakest part is probably QB too. It's QB. And, yeah, and, and yeah, defense. <laughs> My defense, God. That's true. You don't have you don't have a New England or or a Chicago, so it is a little bit of a or Buffalo. Right. Or a Buffalo. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's move over to great kills. Uh, it's just been an unfortunate week. I think it was unlucky for you, and, and you've talked about your team's aversion to TDs, but I think that's really been the case, and hopefully. You know the TDs will follow the usage of of your players like Zeke and now Zeke has yeah. TDs, but more he needs more. <laughs> yeah, no. So we haven't scored a single touchdown in the one o'clock slots. It's because Zeke always plays at like four p.m. because it's Dallas, mm-hmm. and then like uh, the Rams also play at four p.m. because they're West Coast. So every week so far, from one p.m. to four p.m., I'm I'm just like raging at how freaking no one will score a touchdown. <laughs> So it's been rough. I mean, this was a lost week. Like, I don't mind that it came against, like, a huge performance because, you know, you know, I'm not going to win with 115 anyway, and I'm probably not going to beat 230 anyway. So in, in that case, it's it felt fine. But, I mean, there's a lot down on this team right now. Um, you know, Gurley just got hurt. Uh, my receivers are super, you know, inconsistent at best. Uh, Josh Gordon got hurt. I mean, honestly, like, Cooper Cup is... The only bright spot now, yeah, so yeah, so that's what I'm hanging on to. Um, but yeah, like I said at the beginning of the show, uh, I mean Warren went two and five to start, so they're definitely you know it's never it's not too late yet. So you know I'm just gonna keep trying to improve positions where I can, uh, look for trades and stuff. But you know the team is what it is. I like, one fifteen to two thirty is pretty big blowout. <laughs> Lord, yeah, you, you kind of got to hope for, yeah, for right. things for like basically all all the bad things that could happen have happened to your team. You got yeah. Baker playing terribly. Right. You got injuries. You know. All right. You got that. You got Atlanta being just a fucking shit show. Yeah, oh, like I I am, I am so angry at like Atlanta. Like every time <laughs> I try to watch them, they go down like seventeen points, and then like their O line is like somehow like way worse than last year. Um, they abandoned the run like an instant. Yeah, Matt Ryan throws picks. Like it's just, and that that team like defense just gives up like touchdowns so easily too. Yeah. So they're in catch up mode. Uh, yeah, I mean Atlanta being so like bad this year has really been you know a thorn in my side all year. Atlanta is a rare case where what you saw in preseason actually was like indicative of what was going to happen. Yeah. I, yeah, I remember watching how the Jets play them, and like I I rarely watch preseason, but I, like. Our shitty pass rush was completely <laughs> dominating their first team off in the line, and I was yeah. like, "And that moment, I was like, all right, uh, I'm not investing in Atlanta.' I'm yeah. not. Yeah, they yeah. only they only lost one guy on the line, and it, it just got so much worse. They like, drafted was, guys on the line too. They did. They, yeah, <laughs> two guys. Yeah, yeah first. they drafted guys. So, yikes! Um, you do have a bright spot though. It's not on the starting roster. It is Gardner Minshew. It is. Yes, I I like. 
that that is like been the one bright spot like every week i watch him the more i'm convinced like he is for real because like you know like his pedigree uh like draft pedigree is so low so like it's understandable to be uh skeptical like for a pretty long time but even in the games where his stats haven't like been as huge he just plays with like so much poise he like throws such a catchable ball and like he has really good chemistry with sharks so i i really do think like he is a top 20 quarterback like moving forward. So, you know, it lo- allows me to be a little bit aggressive with, um, you know, trades probably with like Phillip Rivers, like, you know, if I can trust right. Gardner Minshew to, to hold it down. Yep. Warren, you got thoughts on Gardner? Love him. <laughs> he is so fun. Like that, he's, he's, he's I awesome. can be, yeah, I can be losing like a week, but like it's Gardner Minshew just, just, you know, brightens it up a little bit. So I am grateful for that. Yeah. I love it how he's so smart. He's just, a great player. I mean, he might not have all the athletic uh, ability uh, traits or whatever, but mm-hmm. he's just so smart that he's able to perform so well. He's got um, some ball security issues that oh, I yeah, that's true. He'll clean up. That's yep. uh, that's true. Uh, he fumbles a lot. Yeah. We'll move on to Capital Region. Um, mm-hmm. Dustin gave them a minus fifteen line. I took Virginia, claiming that I could see in the future, which I <laughs> somehow did. Virginia won under seventy eight point two to under forty four point six two. Um, Teddy Bridgewater and Joe Flacco, we were making fun of them uh, before the game, but Teddy Bridgewater showed showed up with 36.5. Joe Flacco did his usual thing, though. Uh, and yeah. George Kittle with 17.5. Uh, and, sorry, Delvin Cook, Philip Lindsay, they showed up with over 20. Capital Region, uh, Dak Prescott with 32.75. Didn't look as pretty, but he got his fantasy points. Patrick Mahomes only uh-huh. with 24.5. And then, again, there's not really much else from him. Alvin Kamara... Only 14.4, and then a zero from Mike Evans. Ouch, that's going to hurt. Yeah, that, that really hurts. Zero from Sammy Watkins, too. Oh, yeah. Hurt on, like, the Two zeros. Play. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, that was a rough week. Yeah, uh, if, they, if they even put up, like, 15 apiece or something, like, which is very possible, like, you know, they, they could have won. You know, Capital Region could have won, so. Yeah, let's start with Capital Region. Is it, is it time... I don't want to use panic, but is it time to start worrying? Is there a concern here as they as they enter week six with the with the losing record? Uh, I think there is reason to be concerned. Um, the the zero RB uh, strategy that that Diaz always talks about yep. is not panning out, uh, even with Kamara. Um, Miles Sanders, uh, you know, he's good for one explosive play a week, but other than that one explosive play, he looks awful. Um, yep. Uh, obviously, Mike Evans, we already talked about that. Hopkins, I, I mean, I assume Hopkins will, will turn it on at some point. Uh, but, you know, when Will Fuller is healthy, Watson loves Will Fuller. So, I don't That's know. Um, yeah, I mean, Hopkins will get his. I'm not too worried there. But then, you know, the team – when Patrick Mahomes is not lighting it up with 45 points, you know, the cracks start to show a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and Patrick Mahomes is not too healthy. Yeah, not too healthy. So it's going to be. Yeah, gonna be the, 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 yeah he's, he's taken a lot of hits, in, uh, especially like last week. And now that's like two weeks in a row where he's kind of looked a little bit human, right? Yeah. Like, it is possible that, you know, teams are developing a little bit more of a, you know, strategy to like, contain him a little bit more Mm -hmm. obviously Tyreek Hill coming back will definitely you know counter whatever probably other teams are doing right right. yep but I mean yeah I if you're if you're capital region uh you would have hoped to like with the zero RB strategy you would have hoped to find like you know at least one good like cheap RB I I guess Brita could be that guy but yeah they just shared the ball so much there that you know, he isn't that reliable, but he, he is a very good talent, though. So I think that's, like, fine. But, like, after that, like, I don't really see what running back is even, like, you know, startable from week to week. Yeah, and the whole um, premise of the zero RB is that your wide receivers is going to be strong, yet. <laughs> right, right. So Hopkins struggling now. Like, he, he can turn around later, but by then it might be too late. Too late you know? yeah. And yeah. Watkins putting up a zero. He's also starting Royce Freeman, so that's showing... Maybe his wide receivers aren't aren't as good as it seems, right? Maybe he's having some issues putting up a, uh, putting up some back end starters. So it's it's yeah, there are, there are definitely some cracks here. Um, 
Do you guys have any more? We can just move on to Virginia, um, unless you have any more. So, Waku, if yeah. you had to make a move as Capital that's Region, that's in, that's in, that's you make a move? Uh, ooh, that's a tough one. Or do you do you think he oh, can find that's tough. Yeah. a decent running back from what he has or what's on waivers? I do. Uh, I'm a big Breda fan if he stays healthy, I think. I think Ken's made some tough sit start decisions mm -hmm. um you know it's not like he doesn't have talent there i think right. West is a bum but right. like miles sanders has talent um bray does have talent tony pollard uh while not a running back have talent <laughs> yeah i think you don't make a move yet i think yeah i think i would stay the course for a little bit Oh, man, it hurts seeing mike evans deandre hopkins sammy Watkins combined for 12 points but like just hoping that they'll turn it around, get you back to 500, put some wins together, and and hope that you're in contention because um, it could just be that the season's lost for him, right? And he could think about going the other way. So, it's true. Yeah, yeah. his wide receiver four is Kenny Galladay. How like how ridiculous is that? Oh yeah, that's right. That's so it's a bye week situation. That's why. Yep. Okay. So yeah, there. I think I would just wait and see. Hopefully the wins will come. I still uh, think they will. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Virginia, are they legit? <laughs> no, I'll let you go first. Um, I don't know. Like, uh, I mean, 37 out of Teddy Bridgewater. That That's not something you can expect. Julio Jones is actually, like, not doing too well this year. I do think Virginia is more legit than, you know, maybe a couple weeks ago or, you know, what I thought a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um. Especially if Philip Lindsay putting up like mm -hmm. you know a solid effort every week is something he can rely on, which I'm not sure of because um, I didn't really watch uh, that game. So I don't know like how much of it was real and how much of it was just you know ga like game flow and and how he did. But he does have really good running backs: um, Cook, right. Marlon Mack. Like that offensive line is really good, and he does have a lot of wide receiver depth. Um, he doesn't have. The best second receiver, but AJ Green coming back should, you know, theoretically fill that role and, and you know let him let him measure up to like the the contenders in the league right now. So I, I do think they are for real, but probably not the favorite because uh, I think New England is the favorite. Okay, so you're saying for real? How about you, Warren? Uh, I think yeah, I agree with all the all the strengths that Dustin highlighted, and like you know. Alshon obviously like is a rock solid wide receiver three, but he's stretching him a little bit if he's your second best wide receiver. All right. Uh, on like on like a good team, obviously I, I'd be happy to have Alshon Jeffrey. Um, <laughs> but uh, he's just burning so many uh, roster spots trying to find an answer at quarterback. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. The big the big problem at quarterback. Sometimes yeah. you're gonna get Teddy to get thirty six, but not every week. Yeah. It, it I do wonder like since right now it, like his roster was so QB heavy like how do the bye weeks turn out cuz you know like huh. you're going to you're going to need subs at other positions and if you're holding this many tight um sorry quarterbacks uh you know you might be starting suboptimal bye week fill-ins but actually I think wide receiver is fine and I mean running back is probably doable but yeah uh, he does need i think he does need to like clean up that bench so that he has a better mix of like you know upside picks and backups instead of all these quarterbacks yeah so warren you thinking it's legit i think it's a good team i just Final think verdict? uh yeah it's a good team <laughs> yeah it's, i think it's a good team it's been too. a lucky team but it's a good team that i would agree with yes Th there is a bit of luck but for sure it's one of the better teams in the league um, and I think it's reflected in our power rankings as well. So um, the belief is real. Well, don't get too angry at us. Um, it's funny how little yeah. uh, elite QB play factors into a lot of these great teams. That's true. This year has just been weird, right? It's just how yeah. um, how it is. And also, does just the fact that people like Dak Prescott putting up 33 <laughs> and Pat Mahomes putting up 24, like it doesn't make any sense week to week. And yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, Dak didn't even play well. And he right. Third. <laughs> right. Uh, we'll move on to Oakland. Um, Dustin gave an even line. I took Flushing, and then Flushing, they just, 
exploded. 237.51 fantasy points to take the Hamilton for the week um, versus Oakland's 163.65. Uh, flushing, a lot of points came from uh, the Philadelphia defense versus the uh, the Jets offense, 53.46 points. And then Deshaun uh, Watson. I don't, I don't know if you could call that uh, an offense. There was very little <laughs> offense. Deshaun. Yeah, and yep. she was going back to the well again this, this week. <laughs> oh, is he? Against, uh, yeah, against the Jets. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> um, he's, found, he's found a winning strategy. Good for <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. The defense puts up a lot of points in our league. Uh, Deshaun Watson and Kyler Murray, they combined for 84 fantasy, 84.5 fantasy points. That's going to be trouble for anyone. Uh, Oakland, they had a great showing from Matt Ryan, 40.85 points. Um, Sony Michelle, 20.55. Kirk Cousins with 28.25. So some people showing up, but uh, ultimately the LA Rams defense going negative eight, that's, that's going to hurt. And, you know, facing a strong opponent like Flushing, uh, that's going to hurt. So Flushing, what do you guys think about Flushing? Uh, let's start um, with you, Dustin. Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually think this is a really good team. Like if you, if you, yeah. just to, this is like the one team that really like, leans on their quarterbacks from week to week. Um, the thing is, Deshaun Watson has been a little bit on and off so far. Uh, 37 week one, 14 week two, 35 week three, 17 like week four, and then 52, right? So he's been like switching on and <laughs> yo, off. Yo. Yep. And, yeah, and that's probably the reason why, um, you know, Flushing has lost as many games as they have. Uh, so they, yeah, they really do rely on their quarterbacks, but I, you know, Deshaun Watson is a great talent. If he could just work out the consistency i think flushing's wins will start coming um yeah mark ingram like week to week Le'Veon bell should improve once sam sam darnold comes back right right and you know terry mclaurin was a pretty good find for him so yeah i think and i honestly like in terms of management i really like how he went aggressive for uh the defense playing the jets this week um you know in the past like sometimes like we're scratching our heads about how flushing works the waiver wire, but I, you know, I think it's working out for him. And, you know, he clearly sees that, you know, the jets right now don't have a lot clicking on offense. And that's like a pretty good strategy to get um, points on defense in this league. Yep. Easier fantasy points. Yep. What do you think, Warren? Yeah. I mean, this team is good. Um, a lot of these guys, I, he, beat me out for multiple players during the draft. I just think mm-hmm. about the sliding doors, how my season could have been if I didn't let Chu drag his nuts all over my face. Oof. <laughs> That's brutal. Yeah, Mark no. Ingram, he yeah. stared me down and just fucking... <laughs> I, 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 I collapsed. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> Tough one. That's brutal. Um, yeah. I, I really like Flushing's team. I think um, his team also... It doesn't look like it has many weaknesses to me. Um, I love his running backs, Le'Veon Bell. Uh, the points are not too great right now, but as you said, he'll get his volume and then he'll get his production when Sam Donald's back. Mark Ingram in that running offense for the Ravens. It's amazing. And then I really like his receivers. Keenan Allen, he's a focal point for the Chargers and Corden Sutton's really coming into his own. So um, mm, that was if, a good, yeah, that was a good breakout pick for him. Yeah. Right. So, if, and of course, Adam Thielen, who's been, who's looking like him and Deshaun are the cornerstones for flushing. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's so I I mean the one weakness right now was um, tight end like he he yeah. was kind of like that's right struggling but he does have Hunter Henry on his IR and uh, yeah. he should come back either this week or next week and if Hunter Henry is what you know a lot of people project him to be he hasn't really been able to stay healthy or you know he's been sharing a job for most of his career but if he comes back and he is what people think he is this is another team with. You know, very few holes. Um, Darius Slayton, Sterling Shepard. There's some yeah. decent pieces on, on his bench, too. So I, I really like the construction of this team. Um, and, yeah, I think they're one of the top four teams for me. And Greg the Leg, that's kicker. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that's, that's good. Stud kicker. <laughs> uh, we'll move to Oakland. Um, I don't know where to start. Will Disley, good news there. They, they found a tight end. Um, yeah, Will Disley is for real. But yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a, they were one and four. Is it time to sell everything, or is there still hope for there for Oakland here? I don't think it's time to sell yet, but I'm speaking as another one and four team. Um, 
I mean, he's got talent in his team. Yeah, yeah. And and it's not like you know the way things have broken. It's not like the last playoff spot is out of reach. It's currently inhabited True. by by Diaz, right? Like yep. Diaz's team is good, but he's only two games, two games up yeah. on yep. on Oakland. So yeah. you know, there's just there's just no real like benefit in selling before you really have to. So I wouldn't really even be thinking about that now if I'm duo. I, I'm I'm still looking. Agreed. To move around pieces, maybe just because you know there have been some underperformers, um, maybe some overperformers that he wants to sell on. I, I'm not sure. Um, if he if he fixes defense like this week and last week, you know his point total looks a lot better. Um, True. But yeah, I, yeah, he does have to have a little sense of urgency. Um, but he does have actually pretty deep receivers like we we clown on him a little bit for like x amount of starting receivers but uh gallup coming back um healthy is huge uh golden tate looks like you know he's in a functional offense jameson crowder once darnell comes back should be you know very startable for someone so if anything instead of selling i would really try to move one of those guys for an upgrade either at QB maybe or you know even running back although that that seems to be pretty hard to find yeah I think whenever I do the power rankings for this team I get very confused at where to put them because I feel like the, there's definitely talent on this roster and it doesn't yeah. seem like a one in four maybe it's something in the two three or three two range something near 500 I think yeah. um you can see there are stars right the, as you said the wide receivers and you know David Johnson yeah he's still a great back I, yeah but the, the balance of this roster is pretty shit though so i i you know like having all these receivers is is fine but like you know he i think he needs upgrades elsewhere yeah he's just lacking i think what it what it is is that he's lacking that superstar the head right. all of this it's all right. this this uh mid-tier uh i don't want to say mediocre but you know mid-tier talent that's that's good but just not gonna um, yeah i mean give you that's what i yeah that's what i said right after the draft yeah like, yeah you get a lot of the thirty to forty dollar players, which yeah were pretty rare this year. Like everyone went like super high on someone, or like you know went for like really cheap, you know breakout potential guys. And Duo was the one that really stacked up on the thirty and forty dollar guys. Um, so I mean, I there is a lot of yeah, like wide receiver two, running back like two three like talent. I would just probably really try to trade a wide receiver for something. Yeah, and hope before that it's too late. Hope that the Juju. thing is, yep. getting all those thirty and forty dollar guys that can work out if one of those guys plays like a sixty five dollar guy, right? Sure, but sure. If right. they all play according to yeah. you know where you got them, yeah. then this is what you're left with. Right. right yeah. Those guys were um, Sony Michelle, Brandon Cooks, and Stephon Diggs, and all all three of them really have either played to their level or below it. Even so, True. pretty pretty unlucky for him, I think. But you know, that's part of the strategy. Uh, yeah, and maybe Oakland's hoping that uh, with the recent acquisition of Juju that he becomes the, the front-end guy for them. True, true. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes, and we'll talk about that maybe in a little bit more detail in a little bit. So, for now, let's go to Yonkers. Yonkers plus 15 was my line. Dustin took Yonkers. Uh, the result was Mars continuing on their undefeated streak, 192.5 fantasy points versus 125.18. Um Russell Wilson, he's always good. 37.05 fantasy points. Amari Cooper with 33.1. Um, th- this was, they will, and oh yeah, Aaron Jones, of course. He had four TDs, 47.2 fantasy points. The Yonkers, uh, that he had Tom Brady, 32.5. Uh, and then there's not that much. No one else was above 20. That's not a good sign for you, Yonkers. Um, they uh-huh. narrowly escaped the, 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 the poop for the week. Uh, <laughs> It was my birthday gift to him. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's start on the good side here with Mars. They're undefeated. Um, yeah, they're they're a good team, right? Right, guys. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, no, I, I don't think you could say that they're not a good team for sure. It's just a matter of how you see some of the things shaking out in flux right now on his team. He does have a lot. Sure, of- sure situations in flux compared to like you know your team or some of the other stronger teams yeah it depends on how those arrows are gonna change to up or down in these coming weeks what what do you Mm -hmm. think warren john's in a rare position where he's almost hoping for an injury to one of his own guys yeah (laughs) um but like this team is terrifying it is like 
he has old Dell who has not even clicked yet. Um, and if we're talking about, you know, what we were discussing in discord earlier, how, you know, given their offensive line woes, they may want to switch over to some more of the quick hitting stuff. Like, you know, Odell is obviously a great deep threat, but what makes him who he is is the ability to take any quick hitter and take it to the house. Sure. And, and that stuff does not require as much chemistry with your with your mm-hmm. quarterback. So if they find a way to, you know, if they follow our our plan for getting their offense back on track, it could be really good for getting Odell back on track. Yeah, that really is the question. If Odell is the superstar that he has shown in the past and can be, then this team is just a monster um, because yeah. of the running backs and the, the quarterbacks that he has. Uh, he just needs that uh, that second guy, I guess, next to Amari Cooper. But yeah, Odell this season has just been pretty, pretty bad, except for that one... Uh, that slant to the house against the Jets. Yeah, that one play, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that's 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 what you get Odell for, right? That's right. Like there are, there are a lot of guys who can do the deep threat stuff. Maybe not make it look as good as he does, but mm-hmm. the the difference with him is like the moment he gets the ball, he's a threat, like from any position. Yeah, on the field. Although Man, I, few guys are like that. I was reading about how since Odell missed the training camp that it was screwing up their chemistry with the uh, with Baker. Baker and Odell they don't have that chemistry. It's not as strong as him and Jarvis Landry. So maybe it just also will take time uh, to yeah. get that smoothed out. Mm-hmm. Uh, any other thoughts on Mars? Uh, what do you think of their bench? Ooh, let's it's, take a quick look. Let's take a quick look. Uh, I'll fill the space a little. So this is the first time in like five years where I've fallen in the draft. I like I actually like John's team, <laughs> and the first the first time where he wasn't like immediately hitting me up with like offers for my players. So that should have let me know <laughs> that like my team was not very good and his team was good. Ooh, yeah, I I liked his team a lot too out of the draft. Um, yeah. I I like his bench. I think it's interesting in that it's a lot of wide receivers. He's got a lot of uh, guys he can plug in for the bye week, so that's go that's good going into the bye weeks. And then he's got some interesting high upside guys with Nicole Hardman, T.J. Hawkinson, um, obviously Melvin Gordon. But um, yeah, I think it's a great mix to ha- to have on his bench as he gets ready for uh, the future weeks. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think he's being a bit stubborn with uh, with guys. Um, that's oh, a yeah. spot that he could be freeing up. I mean, like he probably doesn't want to admit he was wrong. Doesn't want to take the mm-hmm. final cap hit, but like, I, I there's nothing to indicate that guy is ever even going to play a game, right? Yeah, like, he, yeah, it's play a game it's, healthy. It's sad, but it does look like um, his body just can't take it. Yeah, and yeah, Washington right now is not not the greatest. Right, yeah, even even if he does come back, like, are you going to start that guy ever? Like, yeah. unless right. it's like, unless it's like super injury and bye week for you, like. If if he could trade that away to someone and you know use that IR spot freely because Ben Roethlisberger is taking up the other one, it could allow him to you know speculate on some more guys like on waivers every week. So yeah, I I, I agree with Warren. I, I don't think Ice is worth the spot that he's holding up. If he could trade him, he should. If not, uh, even the cut probably makes more sense because you know y- there's a chance that you find something that breaks out and is much better than guys on waivers like even right now. Yeah, and obviously that's nitpicky because of the the one thing you could say about a team is that he has one lottery ticket too right. few on his bench. Like right, that's, right. you're in a good spot. Right. Yep, they are doing well. No losses. That's that's pretty good this far into the season. Um, let's go to Yonkers. We spent too much time mm-hmm. on Mars. <laughs> um, <laughs> with Yonkers, they they um, they have their two old QBs, but again the in, the injuries. That's the main story for this team. With no Tyreek Hill, no Saquon Barkley, um, it, that that's no team is going to be able to survive that to their stars. Yeah, I mean, if people want to, like, people can feel like they're unlucky, but no one's been as unlucky as Jay. Yeah, true. There have been some underperformances though. Robert Woods hasn't been as good as uh, as advertised. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, I don't really know if Zach Ertz has been as good. Oh yeah, he just recently got his first TD, but he's gotten his volume, so I think he'll be fine. But uh, yeah, it really is just—I think it's mostly injuries. There's not really much to say, I think. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, no, yeah. Like Warren said, no one's going to survive those injuries. Um, if you do want to, like, criticize something, I-, I guess his bench is, like, really weirdly constructed, especially for a team that is dealing with, like, real key players out. Like, yeah, yep. Gio Bernard, when you, you know, when you're all banged up, doesn't really help you as much. Neither does, like, you know, Malcolm Brown as much. You know, I he probably should have tried to, like, shuffle around either through waivers or through trade like to you know at least try to survive the weeks that he was banged up but right you know i mean he might have felt like he didn't he didn't want to hurt his team long term so you know he just held but yeah i mean those injuries are brutal like even if he did move stuff around he he's likely still in the same position that he is so i mean yeah you just have to feel pretty bad for them so because of those injuries and how they, the players are recovering, doesn't he feel like uh, the Warren team of uh, this year? You know, It's true. I, he, he probably has the best chance out of the teams that have, um, you know, are under 500 right now cause just because he is getting back Saquon, Saquon, and, Saquon. and Tyreek pretty, pretty soon. And even Breeze, looks, yeah, even Breeze looks yep. like he'll come back um, not too long. Um, but, yeah, I mean... It's it's what Warren did is 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 always pretty tough. <laughs> um, it might really just be rounding into shape, and he can win the consolation bracket. Mm. But you know he's still alive, so he's got to be gunning for playoffs still. Yeah, for sure. Everyone still has a chance. Yeah. All right, let's go to Harlem. Our last matchup. Uh, mm-hmm. I gave them Harlem minus ten. Um, Dustin took LIC and Harlem won 202.42 259.25 and without even looking at Harlem it's going to be their Patriots defense uh, scoring 25.92 fantasy points uh, it was Will Fuller right? Will Fuller oh yeah that's yeah. right Will Fuller with 217 yards I'll just lean, I won't even say his 44 fantasy points it's 217 yards on 16 targets 14 receptions 3 touchdowns Jesus um, yeah it was a little absurd that's I. I don't even need to talk about anyone else. Uh, for LAC, uh, Jerry Goff with twenty five point nine fantasy points. Julian Edelman twenty point two five, and the Buffalo D with twenty point one five fantasy points. So, uh, must not have been a good weekend for you getting uh, Will Fuller. Yeah, no, I, Warren, <laughs> Warren. Warren had to be raging at, at Atlanta as much as I do from week to week. Yeah, it was. Uh, that defense is just God garbage, brutal. Yeah, I was honestly like I went into the week thinking I had a really good shot. I didn't love Diaz's matchups. I thought, yep. you know, I thought I had a, a really. I mean, obviously the Will Fuller matchup was as good as advertised, and then some. But yep. if you look at the other other players, like Allen Robinson, ah, I guess that's a fine matchup. Yep. But yeah, like I, you know, I had Buffalo almost matching New England, which is like pretty much all you could hope for, right? At yeah. this point, yeah, yep. and. Will Fuller just buried me. Yeah, yeah, and his QBs were um, inspiring a lot of hope, right? It's really you have to be scared of Travis Kelsey and um, his running backs, but uh, man, the points came from a, a unexpected source with Will Fuller putting up three TDs and over two hundred yards. Man, that's crazy. Um, Harlem, they're three and two. As you as uh, as you mentioned, they currently own the last playoff spot. You think that they are on the trajectory to get into the playoffs? Uh, if New England keeps, yeah, the defense, uh, right? I would yeah. Say, yeah, yeah, it's it's just an amazing advantage that they have week to week. It's you can't you can't yeah they just they're gonna win a lot of games with that and it doesn't even matter with uh, some of the other players that they have and maybe they do have the time and patience to wait until Aaron Rodgers comes and shows uh, what he can do or David Montgomery as well as he. Uh, takes advantage of the opportunities that he has in Chicago. So, yeah, it's uh, I think they're going to be competitive throughout the whole season. Yeah, but um, if I had to choose one team for Ken yeah. to supplant, it ah. would be this one. Uh, <laughs> so. or, or Flushing, even. Or Flushing, right, yeah. Right. Um, I'm a little bit more skeptical. Obviously, New England defense is one of the best defense we've seen recently. But, like, the first five games, like, they have easy easy matchups like the rest of the season too but like the first five games are absurd in how how easy they were 
Um, even some bad teams like the Browns, like they could still, you know, move the ball a lot better than, yeah, you know, geez. the Jets without Darnold, like, you know, some like Miami. So like they're I think like second half, like New England defense will just be like the best defense by a little bit instead of like the absurd, like double up they are of the next best defense. Yeah. They face Eagles. Ravens, Cowboys, Texans, Chiefs, Browns are bad, but you know, but then have potential. If, if Diaz makes it all the way, they end up with week 15, 16, Cincinnati and Buffalo. Oh, right, right. That's oh. great. Yeah, but yeah, in 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 between, there are some like tougher yeah. matchups. So other pieces of his team have to really step up. Like Aaron Rodgers can't be you know putting up fifteen or whatever, and right. you know. His wide receivers have been kind of up and down other than Robinson. So, yeah, and his QB2 situation is really, you know, troublesome. True, true. That is so huge cause for concern. Yeah, I mean, the good thing is, like, New England defense has been as good as they are. Um, but I do think you can't rely on them to keep carrying you, and you're going to need to improve everywhere else if you can, yeah. Who's got more TDs, the New England Patriots defense or your team, Dustin? It's probably <laughs> pretty close. Probably pretty close. Uh, this week they might, you know, out touchdown me. Like they had like three. Yeah, yesterday. they had that. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Um, we're ending on your team, Warren. How how has the season been <laughs> they, going for, going for they you? They've the best for last. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've gotten almost zero from. A hundred and four dollars worth of players. So, Ooh. yeah, that Antonio Brown thing is is pretty funny from my our perspective, but probably pretty depressing for you. <laughs> I've just never seen anything like it. It's just so yeah. insane. Yeah, the thing it was is, like though, it was like owning Josh Gordon on super steroids because like everything right. happened from day to day, up down up down. Like it, it it was really the craziest thing I've ever seen. Like. Yeah, and that's the thing is that even before it became super crazy, it was still crazy enough where we hadn't seen it before. That's true. Right? Yeah. So like I the the fact that I talked myself into wanting to own him so bad that I went to seventy with that kind of like yeah uh, weird shit hanging in the air like yeah man, I did think I, I did I did think you discounted the the weirdness like a little bit too much when like. 70 is obviously cheaper than he would go for if he wasn't being, like, all crazy in preseason. But it was still too close to what I think, like, his, you know, not, like, no red flag, like, state would have gone for, you know? Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah. I, so, like, I, 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 I before, high. right, before the draft, I, I was thinking, all right, like, what is Antonio Brown going to go for with, like, you know, him freezing his feet off, like, t- complaining about his helmet and stuff. <laughs> and I had it pegged quite a bit lower than 70 so I, I was surprised that you extended so uh much on him do you remember yeah, who you uh, uh bid with warren that's what i'm trying to remember oh, and man what could another have been sliding door situation yeah yeah wow that's insane well you did have him for one week although i'm yeah that's that's just uh <laughs> i mean that one note. week was he was fucking awesome too yeah, yeah he was um, that, which makes it worse because like if he if he just was not even like crazy. Like if he could just stay out of his own way. Like if he, he once he was on the Patriots, all he had to do was not threaten. Like yeah. send that fucking, you know, <laughs> text message to that woman. Like they were dealing with him, and like you know, he was probably gonna get to play the rest of the year in a pretty good offense and with a and great. Honestly, TV. I think even if he was on the Raiders uh, and none of the weird off the field shit happened, even if he just played for the Raiders, I think he would have done pretty damn well too. Yeah, he was just, just right. really good. Imagine right. the but Raiders I, I, too. Yeah. They could have been good. I'm just saying I'm just saying by the time he got on the Patriots, like he should have known like Oh yeah. there's Obviously. zero tolerance. Like if he even has like one brain cell, he should have just been like, All right, I'm not gonna touch like anything. But he couldn't fucking resist like sending text messages and uh, it it just how is he able to function if he's that dumb? Like it it's it's, it's really it's incredibly sad. stupid. Yeah, yeah. So, so obviously the the seventy dollar price tag though was for what you get the product on the field, right? Antonio Brown, you were thinking he's that talented, even with the baggage, that he's going to outdo that, be a top ten wide receiver in fantasy, and 
you know, carry your team, right? That was the idea. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, the target volume he would have gotten in Oakland would would have been huge. I, I I was really high on him as like as a player. Like I, I really thought like if he wasn't crazy, he could be wide like a top three receiver, if not the best receiver in fantasy. Right. But yeah, he is he is kind of crazy. So <laughs> just not, a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then you had some injuries as well. Cam Newton is uh, it's the big one. Yeah, but that was like he also suffered that that foot injury in preseason. Preseason, yeah. I just yeah. Talked myself into it not being a thing, even though I had mm-hmm. no actual knowledge. Yeah, sure. Warren, yeah, Warren definitely made a lot more misjudgments than I think we've pretty much ever seen from him. Right. And you know, it's it's a learning experience. I mean, not that his season's over, but like he'll definitely. You know, Definitely take something away from this and, yeah. and um, you know, maybe, maybe really, back on the risk. I upped my risk profile this offseason because I knew going into the season if I was going to try to repeat, I needed it to hit um, right. some talent. Sure. Um, so I was targeting guys with big-time talent who, you know, situationally maybe weren't in the best spot with, you know, Cam coming back from a shoulder injury, with Antonio right. Brown being in, in Oakland, uh, and that just blew up in my face. Yep. Yep. Probably the right move then. I mean, still, like, just because, like, like, who cares if you're, like, fifth place instead of last place? Like, the repeat is the goal you were going for, and it was definitely worth all the risk. It just happened that all of them turned out pretty My crappy. biggest regret is squandering what was a pretty – like, I filled out the rest of my team with value everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um Emmanuel Sanders for six, Jarvis Landry for nine, yeah. Uh, Jordan Howard for three. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. no one likes Jordan Howard, but yeah, you know, Jordan Howard for he three produces. dollars. Yeah, he produces. Yeah, um, and I just fucked all that up by not going for like you know when you spend a hundred dollars on two players, you want those guys to deliver value all year. You don't want to risk on those players. Right, uh, they should win you games. Yeah, they so, should win yeah. you exactly. So it doesn't matter what. Doesn't matter if you do good work on the back end of your roster, if the front end of your roster is, you know, falling to pieces. How about Mike Williams? You had traded for him in the off season, and he um, he took he took over your third keeper slot. And I'm not sure what your expectations were with him, and you know how they've come to fruition here. But uh, it's got to be a disappointment, right? Yeah, I mean he's been injured. I still believe in the right, talent. Right. Um, yeah, I believe in the talent. I wish I'd gotten Tyler Lockett instead, but Diaz wasn't cooperating with me um <laughs> and he wasn't cooperating with other people either apparently so. yeah Mike, yeah a yeah. lot of people i think were trying to get locket from him oh it's from john right okay cool yeah. yeah i forgot where mike williams came from yeah that's true he could he could definitely turn it around and you know perhaps even become a star for you so uh i'm not holding out hope on the star part but, uh, <laughs> okay. I, th- I think the the process was right there uh it yep. just uh it, injuries and uh, honestly, I'm kind of worried about the Chargers. Um, they they don't look good. Yeah, their O line is like O-line. really kind of like shaky. Yeah, that's the big part. Yeah, their O line is really shaky. A lot of injuries. And yeah, uh, yeah they I do want to point out this is this is another year where the the two teams that played in the Hunter Bowl from the year before have gotten hit with a ton of bad luck, like. Two of the unluckiest probably have to be Yonkers and, and LIC, for right? For sure, for sure. Yeah. It's a curse. Then, the maybe, I, curse. I, I, yeah, I agree. I think there's something with the fantasy gods and a curse. I believe it. It's crazy. But, I mean, with Warren's track record, we'll see him again winning it in uh, three years. That how it works. <laughs> so. yeah, he is, yeah. Every, uh, yeah, yeah, every four years, it's like clockwork. When's that, 2022? Let's put that in our calendars. Yeah. Um, Let's let's look at the trades real quick here. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I think the main one was the three-way trade. Where is it? There, uh, there weren't too many actually this week. Yeah, yeah so there's nothing, a three three-way trade. Um, I I am still like kind of confused with all of this. Sometimes <laughs> like I don't know why it doesn't. Uh, Okay, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm just not looking at the right place. So, yeah, Jacksonville was sent to New England, Devo Samuels to Virginia, and then Tennessee was sent to Great Kill. So this is uh, just a shuffling of defenses and a 
wide receiver. You need the defense this week, right, Dustin? This week, yeah. I yeah, I wasn't sure how aggressive people would be on the waivers for um, whoever is playing the Jets. So I thought this was probably saving free agent budget for yeah. what I think is like a decent matchup myself. So, yep, uh, pretty simple for me. Uh, for you, I guess Jacksonville has better matchups coming up, and it looks like Jalen Ramsey might come back eventually. So that that could be a a defense on the rise, and for a while he got Debo Samuel, right? Yep. Potentially uh, a lottery ticket for a wide receiver who could emerge in the 49ers. Pretty good offense. Right, right. He didn't He didn't really give up too much for it, so. No, he, yeah, got, he even got fab. So, sorry, yeah. what was that? That's a good get for Hua. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. For value, sure. that's value. That's value. I like the Jaguars. They got, oh, they got Cincinnati and Jets coming up week 7, yep. week 8. That's nice. Yeah, I, I just couldn't wait on them because – my roster is pretty tight, and I need the wins right now. But yeah. yeah, and my Panthers D has a bye week seven, not a good matchup week eight, I believe. So we'll see. Um, mm-hmm. I'll probably use them. Um, Kyle Allen, they go from Mars to Harlem for Fab. I think how, how much mm-hmm. Fab was that? I forget. Uh, four, maybe four Fab. Okay. Um, likely it's to address Harlem's uh, second QB situation. Um, mm-hmm. I think he's got a. Uh, what a lot of people believe is good matchup against the Tampa Bay. I don't know exactly mm-hmm. if that's going to really give fantasy production. I'm a little skeptical. Uh, that's in London, right? Yeah, that's what I was about to say. As you go to London, right. a lot of weird stuff happens. And that's also yeah, why I'm a little yeah. afraid of the Carolina Panthers defense this weekend as well. But mm-hmm. anyways, um, yeah, strange, yeah. strange things happen over there. It's also a divisional game. Kind of gets me worried. Uh, but yeah, that's the idea for Harlem. And then Robbie Anderson moving from uh, LIC to Capital Region for Fab, I believe. Is that correct, yep, Warren? That was for Fab. Did you start any of the sixteen dollars players you um, acquired, Geronimo? I started. Last no, Geronimo and Robbie. I sat. I started must start monster at one time. <laughs> um, yeah, I spent a lot of Fab for not a lot of return. <laughs> um, and then the last trade, Auden Tate for. Whoa! Wait, this is a three-way. Right, yeah, it was. Auden Tate yep. to Flushing, and then Greg Olson to Great Kills, and then what did Oakland get? Uh, free agent budget from Flushing. Yep, three, three fab. Okay, cool. There was a total of four fab being exchanged in that trade, though. Right? Yeah, I, oh, I okay. got one. So what I did was, like, this is like a tip for other people. Like, like, as Warren knows, like, we have a limit on how much fab you can trade during the week. Right. So first, first I you know got the price on Greg Olson for three fab, and then I I shopped around Tate to find someone that would give me fab for him, and then if I just send that fab to Oakland, then I'm not losing any tradable you know oh. trade budget. So it was like a little bit of a you know saving the assets that I have, but obviously it's not something that makes a huge difference. The other piece yeah. of that is their roster size, right? Like if you don't if you need to drop someone. Is that right, part of right. it? I was, yeah, I was going to have to drop probably Tate anyway, so if I could get any fab firm and send it to Duo, then yeah, it, it could uh, accomplish like two things for me. So yeah, that was like a pretty simple trade. I was thinking the same thing with Olsen. Like, um, I think Gerald Everett was out there, but I just didn't know how aggressive I had to be, and I didn't want to like go to nine just to like be sure that I would get him or like reasonably sure that I would get him. So, you know... Greg Olson for a controlled amount of fab was the preferable choice for me. Yep. Yeah, I bowed out of the Greg Olson uh, <laughs> Discord bidding because, <laughs> yeah. uh, as you mentioned, I'm running low on tradable fab. And I didn't want to right, run right. on Greg Olson. Yep, that's probably smart. Yep. Uh, speaking of uh, Daryl Everett, let's go to the uh, ads and drops. Um, I think Everett was picked up by, uh, yeah, LIC for four. Yep. Addressing your tight end situation, I believe, right? As you drop Eric Gibron uh, with their buy. Yeah. I, I Honestly, I don't. I think Eric Ebron is a bum anyway. Um, <laughs> I, for me, you know, this is just trying to raise my ceiling uh, in any way I could. And honestly, it, it lowers my. I don't know if it lowers my floor because. My Jared Goff plus shitty tight end floor is pretty low anyway. Mm. So uh, this really just raises, you know, if they have a big game, the the Rams. Uh, recently, it seems like that would just net me decent stack points. But yeah, know. when you have a 
weaker team or a team that, you know, isn't as strong on paper as a lot of teams, the stack makes a lot of sense because either way to win, you're going to need Goff to, you know, put up points. Yeah. And if he does and it, it goes to, you know, like you're you're rooting for one outcome that helps you twice as much, you know? Right. Like if, if Goff has a bad game, you're going to lose anyway. So like spreading out your risk doesn't really help you as much as... Right. You know, if you're a really good team, then yeah, you want to like spread it out. So even if one guy has a bad game, the rest of your roster can pick it up. But yeah, so I, I like that move a lot for uh, for Warren. Yep. yep. Uh, Corey Davis goes to Mars for seven fab, so he he dropped Jalen Samuels. Um, <laughs> so we I don't think we need to talk about that that much. But Corey Davis, uh, he man, he's a talented wide receiver, but it just sucks to see him. In that, uh, I don't even know what to call it. That offense of of the Titans, it's uh, just an un- unfortunate situation for him. Even though he's he's such a talented uh, talented guy. I just remember when he was a, a rookie in a rookie draft, and I, I you know I looked up the obligatory like you know half hours worth of like highlights from his college tape. Yeah. Like yeah. like man, he was a fucking beast he in is. college. He is. Yeah. I mean, he was facing a little bit of easier, quote unquote, easier competition, but still, like, production's there. He looks like the prototype. Um, you know, he's got all of the abilities, the skills, the techniques, the, the measurables. He's he's got it all. It's just <laughs> the situation. He's also got Marcus Mariota. Yeah, he's got Mariota as his QB. Won't give him the ball, and in the way that he can excel, I think in the fifty-fifty type balls where he can just win it, Mariota won't throw those for some reason. And uh, also the play calling, where I, for some reason Corey Davis he isn't the primary read at times, so it's uh, it's unfortunate for him. Uh, any thoughts? Yeah. Any more thoughts on that, Dustin, or we can move on? Um, I really like what Flushing did in in this waiver period again. Like yeah. Slayton for five. Uh, Slayton, Slayton was like a guy that I was looking at, but I just didn't really have room on my roster with um, bye weeks and injuries. Um, that's definitely, you know, not an obvious pickup for everyone, but, you know, the chance was going to be there and, and flushing got him for a pretty decent price. And, uh, he also bid on his defense, right? So I think five was a really smart number. Uh, I don't want to give away, I've been giving away a lot of my bids, even though I don't have to, <laughs> but I, I had a $4 bid for Slayton. I instead filled it with Haskins, but I had a $4 bid on Slayton for my, uh, practice squad spot yeah yeah five, that's what i was five thinking is, five is a new like 10 kind of thing you know like yeah for people that are just trying to sneak him onto their practice squad you'll at least beat them out um yeah. so five is five is a new like not guaranteed money but now it's non-practice squad eligible money um yeah. so yeah that's that should definitely be a strategy going forward for for teams and stuff I just checked if Flushing had put him into the practice squad or not, and he didn't. So I was, and you had just mentioned Warren that you were going to put him on your practice squad. So I was thinking that Slayton is kind of that perfect pr- practice squad kind of guy. Um, I'm wondering what your thoughts are, you guys' thoughts are, and on the current usage. It seems like there's a there's a mold to it, right? And uh, I did this as well this week as I picked up Reggie Bonifon onto my practice squad. Uh, got a little scare with uh, Christian McCaffrey, kind of <laughs> need my insurance uh-huh. policy. But, yeah, I'm putting him on practice squad. So, um, yeah, what are your thoughts as people put a lot of handcuff running backs on their um, on their uh, practice squads? I mean, yeah, there have been two different usages of practice squad so far. Um, teams that use it on, on handcuffs that could explode in value when the guy in front of them gets hurt. And then um, teams that use it on young players with potential that yeah high upside and and not ready to contribute right now right so yeah those are the two uh usages i see of it and it's pretty interesting as to like like what the right way i mean there is no (laughs) right way there is no yeah but it it is interesting how people are you know leaning towards one way or the other already right and i don't want to leave out daryl henderson did he get to the practice squad i I think he did yeah he did did. okay and Haskins is Haskins is a Oh yeah, that's that's another one. Even yeah, even longer term play maybe just because um you know, that team doesn't look that good this year. But you know, quarterbacks are are one of the better things to stash, I think, cuz no one's going to like try to poach it before um, you know, he starts and then that's when like, you know, he would 
for sure have some value either in trade market or as like a you know bye week fill in or something like that. Yeah, let's quickly talk about Haskins, Warren. What you see in him? Uh, I mean, I see what you guys have seen. <laughs> um, I and I, 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 as someone who's who's who has used the practice squad in in both ways, we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I just made the conscious decision to say to myself, "All right, you know, this season's going the way it's going." Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe I should be thinking about what gives me the highest upside, you know, over mm. the the next year and a half time span rather than the next like you know four week time span. Sure. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I think using it for the handcuff situation is a fine way to do things. Um, I think yeah, I think it's more of a win now strategy. Like, yeah. If, if you're contending this year, you're really maximizing what kind of. Um, you know, like breakout or, or stashing that you could do for this year, really. Mm-hmm. Like, because a lot of these guys that are handcuffed, like, they they would have huge value, but you're probably going to cut them next year, which is fine if you're contending for this year. But right. for the teams that are a little further away from contending, I do think they should be looking more towards um, young players that aren't starting yet that could, like, you know, later on and, like, flash in the last four four games of the season and you know let you keep him next year so yeah i think i think mostly people are using it the right way except for john in week one when i was he... just about to say the only <laughs> trap is don't give your handcuff a two-year deal and then cut him two weeks later. also that yeah <laughs> um ah, but he's five and oh how much how much <laughs> how much show can we talk yeah it's yeah. true he is five and oh i uh there, so there are i'm looking right now at the the salary sheet and there are places where i would say like you know um that practice squad player maybe he should just be on your roster on your roster yeah yeah um, yeah um yeah you know like i'm looking at at hua and you know obviously he's got quarterback kinks to work out but you know it'd be great for him if he could cut one of those quarterbacks have you know smith just on his roster then yeah all right then you don't have to, to you don't have to spend money to, to exactly. activate him you to don't have to guarantee him. guarantee um especially because like his salary for this year gets guaranteed so if you activate him and cut him that's you know six dollars that won't come off your cap you know unless you find a trade or something so yeah i i do agree like him as a contender like it, it, just having so many qbs that's where it hurts you where where you're forced to put, you know, a guy that could contribute on your practice squad, which mm. isn't always the, the right thing, I don't think. So Right. That, I think, is um, not optimal. Yeah. Um, just quickly going through a couple other ads. Mohamed Sanu went to Harlem for eight. Uh, I think that's just for probably to fill his back-end starters, maybe for the bye weeks. I'm not sure. Um, and we talked about the Edo Smith to Virginia a little bit and then some defenses flushing, targeting that Jets matchup mars with a nice sneaky pickup of san francisco i was thinking maybe of picking them up um i didn't like some of the matchups that they have coming up but i do think that they are a legit defense uh, so it's, yeah, it's no, a balance I, if i wasn't you know below 500 i definitely would have picked them up but yeah i would have had them already or i mean one of us would have them yeah between me and dust and i i yeah. was I just can't do it right now. Yeah, that's a that's a really good it talented is. defense though it with is. Bosa and Sherman is even looking you know pretty much recovered from his injury. So yeah, and it's nice for Mars to play keep away with this defense as they have a pretty good defensive situation with Chicago, right? But you know, just mm-hmm. having two um, great defenses, it's gonna it's gonna hinder the abilities of other um, of other strong teams. All right. We should probably talk real quick about um, the trade that just processed right now. Whoa! What happened? It was. It was no. It was. It was pending since yesterday. But it oh, okay, sure. okay, okay. Keyshawn Johnson got excited. to <laughs> uh, to LIC and Geronimo okay. Allison to to Harlem. Oh yeah, uh, I'll talk to you guys through that. I got four fab too. So basically, uh, Harlem, you know, with Devonte Adams up in the air, they just need uh, a high upside play along with uh, right. Rogers. Devontae Adams plays on Monday Night Football, so this allows them to wait for um, oh, Devontae oh, yeah, Adams, yeah, yeah, right? Geronimo, yeah. Because otherwise, otherwise, Geronimo Allison is kind of overpaid, and I wouldn't like it as much. Agreed, agreed. 
like 16 probably not that much value there and even might be a cut once everyone is healthy yeah i was happy um, to get out from under both <laughs> by right right but contracts. but it definitely makes a lot of sense for him with the monday night football thing it, it, it allows them to wait on Devonte adams because he, he's probably not going to know by sunday um or even sunday night so makes sense for him uh for warren good to get out of that contract um because he is he did get pretty tied up to the cap um and Keyshawn johnson is maybe a long-term play like you know he, he's got a little bit of talent yeah. he's young and you know that offense still hasn't finished um completely shaking out and larry Fitzgerald is old so yeah in in every way i think yeah that makes a lot of sense for lic i knew i was going to get a lot of uh a lot of flack on Discord for, you know, the $32 spent and then not getting anything out of it. But, you know, once you spend the money, that's a sunk cost. And yeah, yeah. Point, now you, uh, you just, maneuvered out of it, like, pretty well. Like, both like both questionable values are, are gone, at least now. So. And also, you have to take the, you have the to, lumps from the, the, the peanut gallery. Yeah, I mean, you have to be spending, I think. I mean, the, the, you have to get the wins now, right? Like, you can't be thinking about... Yeah. What's going on after the week's over? You have to try and get the win immediately. So I think it's fine. If that's what you believe in, you go for it. Yeah, that's too. Yeah. Um, We are running late. Uh, Do you still want to do the who you got, Dustin? Uh, Let's just do it real quick without commentary today. Yeah. Without discussing thoughts and process. Yep. So let's go to week six. Yeah. Uh, I, we've been, I've been, I've been uh, alternating uh, four one and losing four one and two two three. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> this is a two three week. So I, I feel good. I'm starting with the Lions, so I will okay. go with. Uh, uh, let's see, what's a good one? Let's go to uh, Flushing, and I'm gonna put Flushing as minus three. Ooh, Flushing as a favorite. Yeah. By home field advantage. Yeah. Um, man, I will vote with my, let me just check their team real quick. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll take flushing real. I, like I, I know we said no commentary, but <laughs> Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray versus Atlanta and Deshaun Watson at Kansas city. Oh uh, uh, yeah. He's got killer matchups. Fire. Up yeah. and down the yeah. roster. Yeah. Right. Yep. Uh, so, okay. I, I give you one. I'll give you, um I'll give you capital region minus ten. Capital region minus ten against Oakland. I'll take capital. Oakland already got thirteen points from Sonny Michelle. That's true. We're trying not to look at the the points already down though. Got it. Yeah. Ah, uh, do I deny my own matchup here? <laughs> I don't even know where I put it though. Minus twenty five. No <laughs> yeah. way. No way, dude. Wonk is gonna like humble, humble his. Uh, yeah. His, his, I can't do this it. It's gonna be the easiest, easiest pick for me. Yeah, I can't do if, it. If you do, if you do put a line on that. Let's let's go Yonkers plus uh, plus seven. Uh, I'll take Virginia. Minus seven. Okay. Um. Okay, then I'll give you. Make it make it one that he can't. <laughs> he can't choose me. <laughs> no, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick my own game, so I really do get a, a line okay. out of. Yeah, yeah. Of, I do want to see what what line he he puts it. How how much he tries to play it down. Um. Okay, I'll say Harlem minus ten. Minus ten. I think I'm gonna go great kills. I mean, with how Thursday shook out, I, I wouldn't. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, if I if I looked at Thursday, it would be Harlem minus like twenty. But I I was trying to pretend like it didn't happen. So give me give me the New England LIC line. New England minus eight. Oh my God! Have some yeah. have some have some respect. I, I, yeah. Obviously, gonna have to take New England. <laughs> You could have offered me up to up to like eighteen. I I, I still what? Probably no, eighteen is 20, ridiculous. My my twenty twenty five is even not not outlandish. 
Come on, no, you're you four and one. We we said you're the strongest yeah. team yeah. on paper, and Warren might not be the weakest team on paper, but he's one of the weakest teams on paper. Nah. You, you got to get and and you have home field advantage, and you're given. You're, what'd you give it? Ten. I Come gave on, myself man. minus eight. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm Come sorry, on, New England fans. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, that's it for today. Um, yeah, good show. Next week, so. Uh, we were supposed to have Ken this week. We're hoping to get him next week. It's again not going to be on Thursday. I, w- right now we're talking Wednesday, so keep that in mind, Dustin. If uh, okay, uh, it's Wednesday night. That's that's the current schedule, but of course things are always subject to change. Yep. Um. Yeah. So uh, that's week uh, five. Let's onward to week six. And uh, yeah. thanks for accommodating my schedule. I also can't <laughs> do you know the usual right, right. show time. No problem. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, Warren. All right, guys. Yep, thanks. Oops.